Come across an unusual little issue with the track switches when the unit's in automatic mode. Right now I have just the train running on the main line, as I have on the four inch panel just showing that the run main line train is operating. And I have diagnostic screen four showing on the main screen. When I originally designed, this is actually a carryover from the first generation project. You have the four track switch relays, which are single pole double throw relays, as they're shown in this schematic. So, let me use a pointer. When the relay is not energized, the contacts are set to the throughway, and when the relay is energized, it's set to the turnout. Now, as I explained in the tour of the second generation project, you don't want a switch point or the thing constantly driving. Now, like I said, right now, this is an automatic mode, so these won't do anything because these, the control has been handed off to the PLC. Um, but if it was in manual mode, if you continued to try to close that switch, I mean, as long as it indicates it's latched, nothing's going to happen. But um, if it isn't, then it's going to try to drive that motor. So it was designed even in the original project to have this relay first, which is called the Enable. And what that does is it connects the common ground through its normally open contacts, and then that goes to the common of the other relays. So as long as this relay is not energized, where these relay positions are shouldn't matter. And there was a reason why I had designed that, but let me just show what's been sporadically happening, which is now consistently happening. See, when I upgraded to the second generation project, I added this fourth switch. And in the process, I had to replace the switch three. And it turns out Lionel made a change to the switches. They're no longer called remote switches. They're actually command control slash remote switches, which these can work with their command control system or the legacy system, which is utilizing these levers. Apparently, it makes a bit of an electrical difference that... Of course, it didn't show up in the first generation project because it didn't have command control switches back then. Or at least, you know, I just had regular remote switches and I never saw this issue. But now it started cropping up in some of the programs and causing the train to do things, you know, turn off into the turnouts when it wasn't supposed to. So just kind of a demonstration. I can force the outputs on to the relay. But right now, let's just say we're going to go to switch 3 and toggle it so that it's showing switch 3 is enabled to turn out. But nothing would happen, and except now it did throw. Nothing should happen. Oh. Hang on. And I didn't want to catch the train derailing. Nothing should happen until the enable is set which is this first relay that connects the common grounds to the other relays but as you will see if I toggle switch one on but not the enable nothing happens until the train passes over another switch and then boom it changes and then it changed back because I toggled it back that's not supposed to happen. Apparently, as it's passing over the switch, it's somehow connecting the common grounds. But there was a reason why I carried this over, aside from that I didn't have any problems with it. Hang on. When I first designed the second generation project, or was designing it, it was actually, the proposal was this team track that I call now was actually gonna have a Y track. And this would mean that there would be the addition of a switch 5, a switch 6, and a switch 7. But I needed to do this with only 8 outputs on the PLC. So with that circuit design, the fact that it worked from the sec first generation project, I was going to have one enable relay and then 7 switch relays. And then in addition, there would be another track power here, which would be for the legs of the Y, and another track power 8 for the tail of the Y. In addition, there was going to be these remote uncouplers 
at the end of the throughway east. The idea is a train could come in, come down here, stop, uncouple its cars, leave the cars on the throughway, and then pull forward, back, and then throw this switch, and then back into the Y, turn around, come back out of the Y, out the switch, stop, throw this switch, back up, recouple with the cars, and then continue in this direction. Um, I ended up scrapping this idea because to build this around the, when I decided to, that I was going to transfer this project to my around the wall layout, this would be pretty much impossible to do around the wall without a lot of suspension. So this whole idea here was scrapped and this just simply became a team track. And now this is the, I just drew this up, this is the proposed idea to resolve the problem. What's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to utilize all eight outputs on that thing. Like this is going to be expanded to eight, utilizing the, the last two outputs on that first bank. And basically, this relay would close to throw the first switch to the throughway. This relay would close to throw the switch one to the turnout. This way, when these are de energized, these are actually electrically disconnected from the switches. So this problem doesn't happen. In addition, I designed a simple interlock circuit so that in the event, if both outputs 0 and 1 were to come on, that would be like, you know, pressing both buttons for throughway and turnout. I would imagine because of the way the switches are designed that there wouldn't be any safety with that and it could possibly burn out a circuit or definitely would not be good. So what I did was the, gra the common ground comes in through the first relay, and when this switch is not energized, the common ground is available for the turnout. So if this relay closes, this relay is disconnected. So if both of them are closed, it's going to default to the throughway. It, you know, the common ground comes in and out to the throughway. This closes, but the common doesn't go anywhere. It would simply be physically disconnected. And this is the way I'm going to have to resolve this problem. Of course, the issue, another issue is needing space. What's going to have to happen now is these five relays, are going to, I'm going to have to add three more relays here. And as you can see, I don't have any space. I could probably expand the DIN rail here. But what I'm planning to do is... I'm going to replace these terminal blocks with double stack terminal blocks, which will cut this in half. And this is this is this part goes out to the uh, the button box. That's the button box interface. And then I'll be able to add on the extra relays. And the outputs, of course, are available. You know, it's just that obviously now I could never use that proposed idea, but I don't plan on it. Looks like I could do enough train operations as it is with the PLC and the trackage the way it is. So that's just a little goofy electrical problem I came across. And I can't say 100% sure if it's because this switch is one of those remote command switches or because I modified it to have a block detect on it. You can usually identify these remote command switches because they'll be a little almost sub subdued button which allows you to enable the programming of the switch to the command control yep actually it's right there that's the command button right there so i don't know gonna have to order some parts and uh make a few modifications but it's the ever-evolving plc train project